right, you can clap. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Um, I'm excited about those kids. Come on. Look at those precious kids. Awesome, awesome. I was uh, reading the Bible today, and um, I was in Luke chapter 18, and Jesus talked to a, a man, and it was, he was the rich young ruler. Do y'all remember that story? And uh, this is how it goes to start out with, and we'll pick it up. The rich young ruler came to Jesus, and he said, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus said, well, you know the law. And he says, I've kept all the law since I was a little boy. And Jesus realized that he had a problem. I mean, you know that Jesus knows where we're at. And Jesus immediately said, well, there's one more thing that you need to do. Then there's only one thing left to do. Sell everything that you own. Give it away to the poor. And you will have riches where? In heaven. And then come and follow me. And the Bible says that the rich young ruler, because of his attachment to his possessions and his money and his stuff. Come on now. I mean, no, you need to be attached to the Lord. And if you got some stuff while you're connected to the Lord, praise the Lord for it, right? But it cannot be your God. And so Jesus told him that he needed to sell everything that he had and give it to the poor and follow him. And then he would have riches in heaven. How many of you know that the Lord is watching your giving? And it accounts for a heavenly bank account in heaven. The Bible says the rich young ruler, when he heard this, because of his love for money, he put his head down and he walked off sad. And then Jesus said, how hard it is for the rich to enter into the kingdom of heaven. It would be easier to take a camel and stick him through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples said, well, Lord, how could a rich man ever be saved then? And Jesus said, with man, not all things are possible, but with God. All things are possible, shout somebody. So here's a couple of points that I want to make as we think about giving tonight. The first point is, is that we got to love God more than we love our stuff, more than we love our riches. We got to be more attached to God than to the things here in planet earth. Isn't that right? And then we get from the Lord that whatever I'm facing, whatever I'm dealing with, it may not be possible for me, but with God, all things are possible. And what I sow into the kingdom of God becomes heavenly treasure. And I actually make a deposit in the bank of heaven that, that accounts to my name. So, Father, I thank you so much that we are not attached to the things here, Lord. We are attached to you. We're connected to you. We love you more than anything in all this world, Lord. And, God, we gladly give to your kingdom for your glory. So now, Lord, I pray for every person that sows tonight. Every person that even has a desire to sow but has not to sow. I pray, Lord, even as Jacob made a vow to you that when I get it, I'll be a tither. And, Lord, you caused the increase in Jacob's life. When Laman tried to, to change his wages ten times, nobody could get over on Jacob because of the favor and the blessing of God. He could not be stole from, Lord. So, God, I thank you that your anointing, your presence, your approval... 
your favor, your blessing is upon your people. And as they sow, you will multiply it back unto them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men give unto them. For with the measure we met, it shall be measured back unto us. Come on from all over this place and sow into the kingdom of the living God. Bank of heaven. Father, tonight as we get into your word, I pray that you will give us revelation. I pray, Lord, that you will teach us what mustard seed faith is. I pray, Lord, as we look into your word that your word will become alive and your word will pierce our hearts and cause our hearts to burn for more of you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you speak to every person that's here tonight, those that are all across the world, Lord. I pray that you will speak to all of our hearts so that we hear the voice of God. And, Lord, you'll give us vision and direction, purpose and fulfillment for our lives. I thank you, Lord, for every person that's under the sound of your voice. Now I yield my heart to you, Holy Spirit. And I ask you to teach us the will of the Father tonight in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Got your Bibles. We're in Matthew chapter 17. We're starting at verse 14 talking to you about mustard seed faith why the disciples could not cast out the demon as the father brought his son to meet with Jesus so let's just start in verse 14 and when they were come to the multitude there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. He, he falls out in seizures. He has he's an epileptic. And he's vexed. He's oppressed. For oftentimes he falls into the fire. And oftentimes into the water. So let me just uh, talk just a second about what's going on. Jesus has just come off the mountain, the, the transfiguration. He's got Peter, James, and John. They were with him and saw Jesus transformed. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Now, the nine disciples, Jesus' rest of his disciples, are waiting at the bottom of the mountain for them to come down. And they were there all night. And while they were waiting for Jesus, a crowd of people started gathering at the bottom of the mountain. What's amazing is, is 
in the presence of God, they heard the Father's voice. This is my beloved Son. Hear ye Him. Do what He says to do. So they heard the Father's voice, Peter, James, and John. They had an experience where they saw the glory of Jesus Christ as He was literally transformed before their eyes. And now they start back down the mountain, headed back towards the world of chaos. Are y'all out there? And there's a big crowd there. And if you take the account out of Mark chapter 9, it really gives you a, a lot more to this story. So when you read the synoptic gospels, which is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they're similar, they're synoptic. You read all their accounts as as Mark wrote and then as Luke the physician wrote. And as these writers of the Word of God were inspired by the Holy Spirit, they still wrote with their personality and with their own life. And also they were reaching a certain segment of people. So they wrote to reach the people that they were ministering to. And that's how we have the Word of God today. And I'm talking about the Synoptic Gospels. And so Mark literally says that there were scribes in the crowd. So there was three or four different types of people that I can identify in the crowd. The first people that I identify with was the scribes. And the scribes were there to to see Jesus, but they had the wrong motive. How many of you know not everybody that's in the crowd that's around you is for you? Not everybody's your friend. Some have alternative motives. And the scribes were religious leaders that were looking for something they could judge Jesus of or something they could bring an accusation or a charge against him and so they were there you had the disciples that were were Jesus disciples that were waiting for him you had the sick and the disease those that were looking for a healing were there you had um The people that were possessed, like the father that had his son, and that's who we're going to key in on tonight. He's looking for Jesus to deliver his son from demon oppression. And then you just had people in the crowd that were just curious. They just heard about this man that's doing miracles, and they just came to watch. And so that's who I identify as the crowd And immediately when Jesus and his three disciples, Peter, James, and John, hit down at the bottom of that mountain in the valley. How many know there's glory at the top of the mountain and in the valley there's trouble? And so immediately it's chaotic. When, When Jesus hit the bottom of that mountain, first thing that he runs into, and Mark brings it out, um, the man came and kneeled down before him and he says, Master, have mercy on me and help me. My son is grievously vexed. He's oppressed by a demon. And the demon is constantly throwing him into the fire. He's constantly throwing him into the water. Somebody said, well, what about the fire thing? What about the water thing? In that day and time, they had a lot of open fires out in front of every household because they cooked outside. They, they stayed warm. Um, And so there was a lot of fires. And so if you got a demon that's trying to kill you and he's throwing you into fires, he had a lot of opportunity because there's fire everywhere. They had cisterns because these were water uh, basins that caught water. And that's where they got their water was was, um, cisterns that they dug that would catch water. And so there was water everywhere. And, and that's why the man is saying, my son is possessed by a devil, and the devil's trying to destroy him by throwing him into the fire, by throwing him into water. And that was a major problem at that time. Right now, you think about fire. You say, well, there's not too many fires happening right now. Are y'all out there? But the times were different then. 
And then the man says, he says, I brought him to your disciples. And they, they could not cure him. And the reason why the disciples couldn't cure him is because the scribes were right there when the man brought his son to be delivered. The man asked uh, the disciples to, de- to deliver his son. And then the scribes started a fight with the disciples. And now they're fussing and fighting and arguing back and forth. And the disciples lost focus of the kingdom of God, the vision of God. Are y'all out there? Somebody said, wait a minute, how do you know that? It's in Mark chapter 9. You can read it. Where they started questioning and arguing and fighting. Next thing Jesus said, he answered and he said, Oh, faithless and perverse generation. Now, I've been thinking about that for a long time. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring the kid over to me. Don't ever think that Jesus didn't get a little frustrated sometimes. Because what Jesus, I believe, is thinking is, is that I'm fixing to go to Jerusalem, and I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to pay the price of sin for the whole world. And I only have a certain amount of time to get you guys to a certain level in me. And so how long do I have to be here with you? How long do I have to continue to suffer with you? He says, oh, faithless. Come on now. He says, you got little faith. And I want to talk about that tonight, that, that um, your faith has got to have direction. It's got to have purpose. And it's got to be consistent and persistent in your lives. And I call that mustard seed faith. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. First thing, Jesus never called his words. What is the first thing he said? Oh, faithless and perverse generation. How long will I have to be with you before you finally get it? Come on, Jesus. We're trying to get it. Are we trying, guys? Lord, (laughs) help my unbelief. That's what the Father ultimately said. And Jesus immediately rebuked the devil. And the devil departed out of that boy. And the child was cured from that very hour. And then came the disciples to Jesus apart. And they said, why could we not cast out the devil? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you. If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will be able to say to this mountain, remove and go yonder, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, here's my question tonight as we think about this scripture. What if we really believed We go to this side. (laughs) What if we really did believe? You know what Jesus says? And it's gotten really quiet in here. (laughs) You try, yeah, come on, Miss Badia. Because Jesus says. If you can believe, all things are possible unto you. So my thought tonight is, is what if we really did believe? What kind of difference would that make in our lives? How could it help my marriage if I was really believing God for my spouse? How would it help me on a job interview if I really believed that God was going to take care of me? 
What if I was buying? What if I really believed that I could buy property and lease it out and have a retirement? What if I really believed that? I wonder what would happen if I really believed God. I don't think we have a world problem. I think we got a faith problem. I believe Jesus. Jesus said that all things are possible to him that believes. Jesus said if you just had faith, because the disciples came and they said, why couldn't we? Now, i got to commend the disciples because they're on the high, right highway. They humbled themselves and they went and asked, why couldn't we do it? And what's so great about that is, is that that's how we grow in our faith. That's how we mature and we develop in our lives is we humble ourselves and when we make mistakes, we ask God to forgive us. And we ask whoever we've sinned against to forgive us. When, when, when things don't work like they should work, we come to the Lord and we say, Lord, I, I, we're doing this all wrong. Uh, Lord, what, do you, what, what did we do wrong? How can we make this right? I'll never forget. I was uh, in a house about... Maybe 20 years ago, I was selling life insurance. And in the house, I, I went into the house, and the mother told me that her little boy, seven years old, had been expelled from school because he'd been hearing voices in his mind to stab the eyes of his classmates out and his teachers. And now they had expelled him out of uh, school. And she said, could you pray for my son? Just the same kind of story as this. I said, sure, I'd be glad to pray for him. And when she brought the little seven-year-old to me, when he took one look at me, he says, I hate Jesus. That's when I, my antenna went up, right? And then I, I commenced to try to To pray for him, and as I started to pray for him, he started spitting on me. So he got so crazy that I ended up, I, I ended up, he was fighting me so much that I ended up putting his arms over his chest like this and holding him down with my knees. And I prayed for 20 minutes, everything that I could think of. And nothing happened. And so, finally, I just, I didn't know what else to do. I, 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 I was out of ideas. And I just said, God, if you don't show me how to cast this demon out of this little boy, he will still stay possessed. I prayed that, and the little boy took off running to the back room. Me and his mother went behind him. When I walked into the room, there was a big poster on the wall that said, Voices in my mind. I asked the mother, I said, What is this? She said, Oh, his older brother is a rapper. And the name of their band is Voices in My Mind. I said, that's where the demons are coming from. They're using this object as a transference to come into his life. Thinking back, I'm sure he was listening to that music, right? It's his brother's. And what's happened is, is through the music and through the paraphernalia, all, all the, the stuff, he was receiving a wrong spirit. I 
told his mother, I said, we've got to clean this room up because this is where the demon is coming from. I said, is it all right? She said, it's all right. I reached up and grabbed the poster, voices in my mind, and I tore it in half. And when I tore it in half, the little boy screamed, ah, and he fell on the bed like he was dead. I looked at the mother. She looked at me. <clears throat> and then three or four minutes later, his eyes opened and the countenance on his face was totally changed. He was a different little boy. And I said, do you want to make Jesus Lord of your life? And he said, yes, sir. And I led him to Jesus Christ right there. But that taught me something. That it took the power of God. It took God giving us a revelation and showing us what we need to do and how we needed to do it. Mustard seed faith, I believe, is this. I believe that it's your, your faith has got to be put in the right object. I don't believe you can have faith in faith in yourself. Because I don't think you have the authority of the power. I think that your faith has got to be in God. And that's got to be the object. And then you got to point your faith in the direction that you need to release it in. And in that case, it was that little boy. And in this case, this was uh, this man's son that... Faith had to be released, the authority of the kingdom of God, so that it would release the power of God, because that's what we're doing. We're putting faith in God. We're trusting God. Listen, any of us can say we got faith in God when everything's going right in our life and we got money in the bank account and your wife's acting right today. We can say that, that we got faith, but let me tell you, you got to have faith when everything seems to be going wrong in your life, in difficulties in your life. you got to be able to have faith when you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. you gotta, you got to have faith in God when it doesn't look all that good in your life. That's, and listen, God tests all of our faith. God allows us to walk through all of these things because this is what teaches us the character and the power and the life of God. This is what teaches us to have faith in God when we walk through deep waters in our life. And God is there for us. I know I've walked through deep things in my life. And listen, when my enemies came against me, God stood up for me and protected me and delivered me and set me free. So you can never tell me that God is not there for you when your enemies come against you. So no matter how many people in the world come against you, if God be for you, who could be, who could be against you? But what it does is, is it develops faith in you. So you never grow on top of the mountain. You always grow in the valley. That's where God teaches you your greatest lessons. That's where you learn who you are and who he is. That's when you pass believing. That's when you come to know God. It's when you have to depend on him and trust him for everything. Rich in faith, rich in God, because you had to believe God. Let me tell you something. Success might be the worst thing that ever happened to you. Because you could possibly forget who God is. I remember Deuteronomy chapter 8. And the Lord warned Israel. It says when you come into the promised land. And you build houses. You got vineyards. And your silver and your gold multiply. Be careful that you never forget. It's the Lord your God that gave thee power to get wealth. Never forget God 
the rich young ruler's faith was in the wrong thing. He was putting faith in what he could do. That, that's why he said, oh, all of those I have done. I love the Pharisee and the tax collector in the temple praying together. The Pharisee prayed to himself, I thank thee, O oh God, that I fast twice a week. I give tithes. I'm not an extortioner. I'm not even like that tax collector over there. Oh, God, I thank you. I, I, I. And the little old tax collector wasn't looking to himself. He was only looking to God. And this is how he prayed as he beat his chest. He said, God, I pray you'll be merciful unto me, a sinner. And the Bible says that Jesus said, which one do you think walked away justified? And they said, the tax collector. And Jesus said, you've rightly said the tax collector. Because whoever exalts themselves shall be abased. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. I mean, you know that faith is, can't be the faith of the Pharisee that looked to himself of all that he did. Your faith can't be the rich young ruler where you had faith in yourself and in your riches. Your faith has got to be in God. It's got to be like mustard seed. Somebody said, well... It's faith the size of a mustard seed. No, it's not the size. It's the quality of your faith. It's the maturity of your faith. What Jesus was saying to the disciples is, He says, Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, faithless generation. Oh, perverse generation. Jesus was saying to His disciples, You got immature faith. Faith. You've not grown yet to a certain level. If you only had faith as a mustard seed, your faith has got to be just like a seed. A seed is a, 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 a miracle worker. A seed is a little old tiny thing. But what you do is, it's just like your faith. You plant it in the ground. And when you plant it in the ground, you, you can't, your faith can't go dig it up and say, where's the harvest? Where's the tree? What's going on with you? Because when you're not persistent and consistent, that's what you do with your faith. Jesus said, if you only had faith as a mustard seed, it's just like planting a seed. You plant it, and, and when you plant it, inside of that seed is a miracle. Inside of that seed is provision. Inside of that seed uh, is going to produce a harvest. And here's how it works. When you plant it, water it, and allow the sun to come on it, first thing it does is it germinates under the ground. So your faith has got to be germinated. It, it's got to have some moisture. When it has moisture, the first thing that grows in a seed is its roots. Because until the root grows from the seed, it has no stability for the plant that's coming next. And this is how your faith works. When you plant this seed, it starts to root. And when it roots, it starts to sprout. And when it sprouts up and, and, the, and the light is hitting it, the water's hitting it, the food of the, of the soil, which is nutrients for the plant, when all of these things come together, it starts to grow. Listen, let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to wait uh, six months before your faith comes to pass. But if you dig the seed up, if you chop the, the, the doggone plant down before it produces, you will never see the harvest of your faith. Faith is just like a seed. That's how it works. And that's what Jesus was saying. He says, huddle up, disciples. Lord, why couldn't we cast out the demon? Because you gave us authority in Matthew chapter 10. And we casted out every devil we saw. In fact, we were so excited. Don't you remember, Lord? We came to you and said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us. And you remember what you said, Lord? You said, rejoice not that demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So then, Lord, we've been casting out devils. What's different about this one? 
And Jesus said, some demons come out by fasting and prayer. Sometimes there's different levels of struggles in your life. But in the struggle, you can't quit. In the struggle, you can't dig the seed up. In the struggle, you got to keep fighting the good fight called faith. You got to keep standing. You got to be like that woman, that widow woman. In Luke chapter 18, you remember her? Jesus started, he said, he says, I, he says, I would love to see all men pray and never cease from prayer or never the faint. Faint not is what he said. In other words, he says, when you pray, be consistent, be persistent. Don't ever quit. Listen, it's like the seed. It never quits. The seed has a purpose. The seed has a direction. The seed has persistency and consistency in its life. And that's what your faith is like. And yeah, it may take a six months. It may take a year. Listen, some apple trees take three or four years before you see one apple. But you don't chop the tree down when it don't produce at first because you're patiently waiting on the Lord to manifest the miracle miracle of that seed and when he manifests the miracle of that one seed that you planted it's going to create a bunch of apples so that not only you can eat apples but all your neighbors listen your neighbors are going to eat from your faith in your life that's how this thing works you guys will so your faith will produce a harvest and I'm going to eat from that. My faith is going to produce a harvest and you're going to eat from me and all of our faith is going to produce and it's going to be a gigantic feast in this place. I'm eating from you, you're eating from me. Give me some of that. Give me some of that. Give me all that. I want that. Faith. Because faith in God is going to release the wonderful provision that God has for all of us in our lives. Can I get an amen? And when he had came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude. Of course, I, don't, that, that's, I want you all to read that. I don't have enough time tonight. But I want you to read Mark chapter 9 because this is what I believe. I believe Jesus was giving us the revelation of what it is to have faith. He said that if you have faith as a mustard seed. The King James says as a mustard seed. I never have believed that it's the size. Because I don't know what. I guess... He says that from experience to experience, from faith to faith, what I believe is, is I believe that, that even when we have what we classify as little faith, I believe that when we come to the Lord humbly and we admit to him like the Father did, Jesus said, he said, if you, the, the father said, if you can help us. And Jesus shot right back and said, if you have faith. So when the man said, if, Jesus turned the if right back to him. And he says, if I can help you. If you only have faith. And the father said, I believe. Help my unbelief. And immediately when he said that, Jesus 
delivered his son from the demon. What am I trying to say tonight? I don't know about big faith, little faith, in between faith. I don't know what what that looks like. All I know is, is Jesus is so good that you can have a little faith and be honest with him and tell him you need some help and, and you need help with your belief and the Lord Jesus will help you with your belief and wherever you're at. And, and that's all you need is you need a heart for God. All you need is to look to God and when you do that, whether you got little faith or big faith or middle-sized faith, God will be there for you. All God wants is you to put your eyes on Him, your love for Him, your trust for Him. So whatever you got, if you just give it to God, God will multiply it. God will supernaturally do whatever, whatever you give Him. Because I've never seen Jesus turn anybody away that didn't look to him so tonight we turn our hearts and our love to God and as we do that the Lord will meet us where we're at and some of you will become great people of faith Some of you will have lots of faith. But all I know is, is wherever you're at, if you'll make the step towards God, God will meet you where you're at. And whatever you don't have, He will have it for you. Come on now. He will make up the difference. Can I get an amen? I don't know if I've said it all right tonight, but I know one thing. I know if we'll trust God with who, whoever we are, wherever we're at, whatever we got, if we'll give it to Him, He'll cause the increase. Lord, help us all. Help us all to trust You, Lord, where we're at in our lives, God. Lord, we admit to You that we ain't all that, Lord. We realize that we're not all that, but You're all that, and we believe that You're all that. So whatever I'm lacking, You're all of it. And so, Lord, I bring my little self to you. I bring my little stuff, whatever I got, I just give it to you, Lord. And I trust you with it. And so now, Lord, here I am. Lord, do what thou will with me. Do what thou will with all of us now tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all the church says... Amen and amen. Come on, stand up. Let me release you tonight. Father, I pray now over Miracle Place Church. I pray over all of our audiences, Lord, all over the world that are in our broadcast, Lord. I pray that you would cause us to increase. I continually pray for your favor and for your blessing and for your glory to be in all of our lives, Lord. God, I pray that you'll put a hedge around us. You will cover us and protect us wherever we go. Now, Lord, we look to you. Every struggle, every pain, every lack, we totally look to you. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. Your blessing upon your people tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Come on, if you love Jesus, say amen. Have a great, great night. We love all of you, and we bless you in the name of Jesus.